All right, so I had a pretty long spiel on basketball today. Man, I used to love basketball. I was an athlete, you know, coming up in Chicago that that the 90s, as rough as it was, it was great when the Bulls was winning. We had great times, lots and lots of memories. That was one of my first times seeing some, um, how do I want to put this, breast without it being on TV or something like that. Just just riding down Madison after the Bulls won. It was like, I guess, what you can compare to Mardi Gras. So that was great. All right, so the next bit of entertainment while we're, we're dealing with sports. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson the Great. It's something about the name Mike. Michael. Michael Jordan. Mike Jackson. Mike Tyson. These are three greats at what they do. I wonder if it, I don't know. I always, I always looked at it and said, man, I wonder if that has something to do with Michael the Angel. Just because they're all, in a sense, they're kind of like warriors. At least Mike, Michael Jordan and Mike Tyson. Anyway, Mike Tyson, 53 years old. If you haven't seen it, go to YouTube. Just type in Mike Tyson. I'm back. He says he's back for boxing. He's got a few videos of him doing some training. Again, 53 years old. Man, Mike looks dangerous. Mike looks like he'll hurt somebody real bad. Really fast still, quick, nasty, nasty power. So, is he back? Is he actually going to fight someone in the ring? Is it going to be someone his age? Is it going to be someone currently ranked? Is is Mike looking to be the oldest World Boxing Federation champion? Is that what he's doing? I don't know what Mike's doing. I think Mike is bored. Mike got money. He got a whole animation series. Mike stay in movies and on on TV shows. and Mike stays busy. But Mike has chosen to train hard at boxing. And man, does Mike look good. He looks good, man. 53 years old. Makes me feel like every day I need to get up and do something. And I don't want to ever want to run into Mike and Mike is upset. I won't be the one that he's upset with, but I don't want to cross him. <laughs> so how good was Mike for real? Early 90s, man, Mike was knocking people out so fast. You know, a lot of people were missing the whole fight. The whole fight would be one round. And, you know, you'll order pay-per-view. You'll be in the kitchen getting your meal because the mic fight is coming on you hear that ding 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 if you ain't in that room you might miss it and you're gonna be upset and you're gonna know you missed it you're gonna hear it you're gonna hear everybody in your house going crazy once he hit whoever he hit and then it's gonna be like oh man that's it yep because mike mike was the kind of that kind of fast it's, it's scary to watch all that ducking and dodging and next thing you know he done threw two punches landed both of them buddy out of there that's typically how it goes a lot of the names that mike went up against the the individuals they weren't all big names because I mean, he just came in a time where the, when he first came in the, the heavyweight division just wasn't all that great but personally i don't i don't think it mattered with the training and the management that he had when he first came out, first came into the boxing profession, Mike would have whooped anybody. He was highly skilled. We all know about his strength. But Mike was, he was a studied boxer. He knew what he was doing when it came to boxing. And once he got done and started opening his mouth, Mike was crazy. But he had, he, he seemed to have that, that attitude and that spirit that Mike Michael Jordan had as well of I want to be the best and I want to win. They had it. Both of them. Mike was scary when he was young, man. He he put fear into everybody getting into that ring with him. But the fame, the fortune, the women, I think that was that was ultimately what what led to a lot of his chaos and disaster you know when it's so young you know he was he was the world champ i think at like man was he like 21 
Mike was extremely young when he when he was the, the heavyweight champion. And I'm sure that had a lot to do with it and a lot a lot to you know, yeah, that, that just had a lot to do with with his demise at that time. And then the death of his trainer that really hurt him. Didn't really have much family that we were all aware of. That was his family. And then Hey, I wasn't around him and Robin Gibbons, but it didn't look kosher. I was really young at that time. Even then, it didn't look kosher. You know, it did not look like she was out for his best interests. Did not look like she wanted what was best for him from from the way outside looking in. But that's what it looked like. Um, it didn't it didn't come across as one of those relationships where, you know, hey, you got who got your back? I got your back. Didn't look like that at all. I think it's pretty safe to say that he had a lot going on mentally that that helped destroy that time for him. And we know overall that he's a great person because we've seen him bring himself back from all of that. Even when he first came back and he had those couple of fights and Biddy Vander, Holyfield, and all of that craziness. Even after that, I mean, from after that up to now, we've we've seen the evolution of Mike Tyson. We've seen it. It's safe to say that he's a great guy. All right, when it comes to boxing, though, right now we hear a lot of the Mayweather talk. Who's your great? Who's your favorite? Who is the greatest boxers of all time? And that's hard to do because you got so many weight classes. You know, it's not like it's not like basketball where everybody's just thrown into one arena. Boxing, you got divisions, different weight classes. Man, Mike was amazing. I've heard a lot of the greats talk about Joe Lewis, which is really cool. You know, so all of the greats pay homage to Joe Lewis. For me coming up, Roy Jones Jr. was my favorite boxer. It was Mike and Roy for me. Because Roy had the nasty power and he was quick, but he was a show-off. And then he bounced around in, in a couple of different weight classes. So Roy was doing his thing big time. Roy Jones Jr. And then he had to fight some people with some names. Bernard Hopkins. Those lower weight classes, they had they had more to offer, it seems like. I don't know where boxing is going now because now it's, it's everything is, is moving and going towards mixed martial arts, UFC. That's what everybody wants to see. Some of the greatest boxers I've I've seen myself. Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., Oscar De La Hoya. He was the man. Carnell Whitaker. George Foreman. I didn't I didn't get to see George live when he was young, but I you know, I seen some tape. But also I know George came back and and boxed, and I think he won a championship in his 40s, if I'm not mistaken. He won a belt. Uh, James Tony. that's a funny one to watch, just because he never really looked like he was in shape, but man, could that dude fight. Gotta love Ali. Ali. Ali was more than just a boxer. Where is the spirit of Ali in today's generation? That's what we're missing. We need that bad. And Mayweather. Uh, I don't know how I feel about Mayweather. His his record is great. It speaks volumes. But I just felt like he never, I don't know, I don't know. Can't say he didn't fight any of, you know, any people that were in their prime while he was in his prime. But that's not true. He fought Kodo. He whooped on Kodo. He fought Mosley. You got to give it up to Mayweather in the in the ring. Outside of the ring, entirely different story. All right, so I guess you can say episode two of the Winter Circle was the sports edition, the current sports edition. Any um, suggestions, ideas, questions, topics, please um, holler at me. Let me know what's on your mind. These are getting better and better as I go. I'm going to work at it.